Yeah, it works now? Uh, yeah, I'm used to it. I have to bend to the microphone. Uh, my name is Joachim Mitsun. I'm a PhD student at the University of Oslo, and I have worked together together with Bob on this algorithm called pace chirping. Um, I'm not feeling well today. I'm flying back to Oslo at 12. So he will do the talk, and I will sit there until I have to leave. Um, yeah, he doesn't know the codes. I'm the only one who has seen the code. I, I, and I'm not reasonably well, but well, I'll, I'll try and cover it. Yeah. <laughs> this position is very tedious. Yeah. I mean, it's... Joachim's been, been ill now <laughs> for six weeks. Yeah, so I was ill before I came here, and I hoped that I was going yeah. to get better, but yeah. I'm getting worse. Okay, come on then. Yeah. I'll, it's basically, he's, 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 he's always feeling fatigued, and he, 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 you know, it's difficult to keep going. So, so let's, let's try and do this. Um, right. Ne oh, yes, it's this one, isn't it? So this is a way to um, improve the startup of TCP. Uh, even though I'm giving this talk, it's not directly related to the last talk. You know, this, this is about all for all TCPs. Um, you know, it's, so it's not just about L4S. It's a delay-based system. It doesn't use ECN, although it could use ECN to improve it in the future. Um, so I just need to make that context switch because you've just seen me talking about something else. Right? <laughs> um, having said that, um, because we're interested in DCTCP, most of our testing has been with DCTCP in, you know, for a data center type scenario and for um, stuff like that, and TCP Prague and so on, but it is intended to be for all um, TCP. And in fact, Joachim has been using this on his laptop just all the time, you know, it's, 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 um, and the code's available. So um, I hope everyone here knows what TCP slow start is. Um, but Essentially, it's a, it's a trade-off. The point here is a trade-off between how fast you accelerate and how much you overshoot. And what pace chirping does is break that dilemma. It, it gets you out of that dilemma so you can um, get up to speed faster and faster as, as link rates increase without having to overshoot anymore. Right. Um, and the, th there is another problem um, that this slide shows, which is that in a um, shallow buffered or um, low ECN threshold environment, it's very difficult to stop TCP uh, or stop the slow start hitting the, th the ECN threshold before you get um, up to speed. And so what tends to happen is um, here you come out of slow start early and then you start an additive increase. Um, and similarly, when you've already got one flow in, a bit later, another, you know, th this, this is sort of, what, 200 seconds in, you've got a jump and another flow comes in. It, it hits the threshold because the other flow is already um, in there and it has to do an additive increase to come in rather than a slow start to come in. Um, and um, so... The, uh, then you've also got, the, uh, the, these are about the problem, not this is without pace chirping. You've also got the problem here where the slow start causes spikes of queuing delay. So you've got a potentially nice, um, I, actually it's a real shame that um, Dave has walked out because um, he could use this as well in, um, in what he's doing. But anyway, um, I just noticed. So you've, got, so you've got low delay in general, but your, it's your slow starts that are really causing those higher percentiles of, um, you know, it's, it's all those spikes from new flows coming in that are causing your delay problem. Um, so what pace chirping does, some of you may know the tool path chirp. Um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a way to test the capacity of a, of a path. Um, and we're using these chirps to estimate the capacity as the flow is accelerating. Um, it's, it's not only useful at, at flow start, it's obviously also useful when you do a slow start after an idle or instead of a slow start after an idle. And we've also been experimenting on using it um, when um, you detect that 
you could go faster while you're in congestion avoidance as well. Um, it's delay-based. Um, actually, you say primarily delay-based in your slide, but it's delay-based. There's no primarily about it. Yeah. Um, and um, it's not just rel 4 s as I said at the start. Um, and, and really, the idea is that it's to become a closed-loop startup algorithm, because at the moment we have an algorithm that's just hard-coded, this is how you start until you find the top. And it's got no information. It's running blind until you get to the top. Whereas what this is trying to do is get information as quickly as possible, um, you know, preferably in the first round, to find where you think the top is, but with a very noisy estimate. Because as we're getting faster, that exponential increase of slow start is um, taking more and more round trip times to get up to speed. And so the older round trip times, the information's become stale anyway, so there wasn't any point doing them. What you want is to get information in the most recent round trip time um, and get up there very quickly. There's no point having done all that stuff in the past by the time you get to the top. Um, so, what is a chirp? <coughs> it's a group of packets sent at an increasing rate. The name comes from radio, um, where you're scanning the frequencies. And it's realized by a decreasing inter-packet gap. Um, do correct me if I say anything wrong. Um, you, you're aiming for an average packet gap from your previous estimates of where you think the rate is and you're, you're scanning around that rate on a per packet basis. So you're testing, a, in, in this case with a 16 packet chirp, you're testing 15 rates, um, with one rate between each packet. Um, and you look at the act stream coming back to um, see when the gaps you're putting into the front become um, stretched out, which means you're, um, you haven't got a picture of it here, but essentially the act stream has that same interpacket gap up to a point and then it flattens out, which shows that the, the, the available capacity of the link can't get better than that. So it's much better than packet pair. That's why it's used in the path chirp tool. Um, and you can, you can vary the geometry and everything of it. Um, right. So paste chirping is about um, taking that chirp idea and testing multiple places across the round trip time, um, looking for other traffic and trying to find the available capacity. Um, and you have these um, guard intervals between the chirps. So each, each rectangle here represents, in, with a 16 in it, represents one of these 16 packet chirps. Right, and a, this is an eight packet chirp and so on. And so what we're doing, instead of uh, increasing the window um, in, any, in a paste way, um, we're doing this, this chirping and then pacing the chirps. So we're treating the chirps as units. And the reason we're pacing the chirps is that guard interval allows the queue to relax. So you, you pump it and then relax and it um, then give, and, and then you pump it again and relax, pump it again and relax, all it within a round trip time. You've not yet got any acts of what you just did, but you're assuming you might have been wrong, so that's why you've been relaxing it, because you don't know whether you were right. And then when you get all that information back in the next round, you've got a better estimate, and you can start putting your chirps close together with a smaller guard interval and um, encode that. Um, Joachim's written before he was ill um, the um, guard interval we, we squeeze it up depending on the variance of all the measurements you're getting so the more solid your measurement the faster you can go up because that probably means you've got a clean um, you know, straight ethernet link and you're getting every measurement the same so you can go straight there whereas if you've got very variable measurements you've probably got other traffic there and you need to be a bit more careful or you've got a radio link or something and, and, and so you start um, taking longer to probe. 
Um, <coughs> right. Anything? Yeah, okay. Right. Um, so there's another picture of the same thing with the chirps getting close together and then a guard interval. And your sequence space is obviously moving to the right. Um, so this is what you can get. Looks pretty good. You know, straight up. Um, and that the, without post chirping is on the right. Um, so um, you've got one flow coming in straight up to the top, two flows coming in, nearly straight convergence, three, and, and so on, right? Um, so, I want to try and get the implementation. Hardly any queue, first to be, oh yeah, of course, that, that, those last plots were the um, throughput, then the important thing is the queue. Instead of, without, you had these, these pulses, you know, th this was slow start, this is our queue now. You know, I think we're talking, uh, sorry, I'll the, oh, the two were different for a while, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, we're getting, you know, in the, in the hundreds of microseconds queue um, instead of in the multi-milliseconds. Um, right, now. Maybe we can skip through some numbers and then we'll get to that. Yeah, 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 go on. Yeah. Yeah, let's skip, let's skip the... Um, you, you can go backwards, right? Yeah. If we, or just not do it because we're probably out of time. Yeah. But um, implementation. Yeah. Yeah. Go. On. Um, <coughs> so yeah, the code is available at this GitHub. Uh, to change it to the kernel is another GitHub, uh, um, but it's pointed to by by readme file here. So just access this, and you can download the kernel, look at the changes, and uh, <coughs> try page tripping out. I mean, it's not production ready yet, but uh, I hope to to make it in the future. Um, yeah, so there are two, two, oh, this is really, really bad. <laughs> Maybe I can just sit instead. Does this work? Yeah, uh, great. <coughs> so there are two major changes. There are uh, changes to the kernel itself, to the TCP stack, and changes to the data center TCP CC module, which actually implements the page tripping logic. So the logic itself is in a CC module, and we have made some changes to the kernel to um, be able to send chirps um, using the internal pacing framework. Yeah. So this is a... <coughs> Sorry, uh, this is a um, call graph uh, of what's happening um, when page surfing is, is run. Uh, you have the congestion control module in the top right, uh, and you have the TCP stack in the bottom and on the left. So the CC module uh, indicates to the um, TCP stack that it wants to chirp, I said it's chirping. And then when the TCP stack has some data, it checks if the CC module wants to chirp. And if it doesn't have a, a chirp description, it, is, it asks the congestion control module for, for a description um, through a new uh, callback called new chirp. Um, the implementation then fills in the chirp description uh, and returns zero to indicate that it wants to send packets. And then the TCP stack realizes the chirp by uh, introducing appropriate gaps in between packets or segments. So yeah, that's uh, that's the implementation. And yeah, my mind isn't working very well right now, so uh, I think I will just stop there. Uh, Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to go home and get to bed. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um, 
yeah, so the important point here is that the, it uses the internal um, pacing framework that um, Yu Chang and Eric and everyone added, um, but instead of using it for a constant rate, it's, it's, we've added a structure in there, a, a chirp structure, so that um, you, you, it basically goes through um, and tells you when the, when, the, when the next packet needs to be released, um, which is effect effectively what pacing does, but this is using it to, to put different times between the packets rather than the same time. Um, so, um, uh, and essentially that's to get information back, because if, if you just pace um, and send it, I know, say, say your link is 100 meg, but you don't know it is, because that's the whole point of doing slow start, and you pace it um, you know, absolutely accurately at 90 meg, you'll get, you don't know, you still don't have any information as to whether you're going to going to have problems sometime when you go a bit faster, so the idea is 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 to um, not pace. Go on, Eric. Yeah. Sorry. So you described it, the the sender part. Uh, what about the receiver part? How you change the thing? Because it it looks like a bit of a high start in cubic. Mm -hmm. React to the how the acts yep. come back, but. Yep. How it's done on the receiver part? How right, it, there's, there's no change to the receiver, it's sender only. The, the, um, th this, is, this is where my um, knowledge runs out because I only discovered yesterday that Joachim has, has solved the problem of delayed acts, which I, I, <laughs> I didn't know he'd done. I, I thought that was an outstanding problem. But um, he's, he's done a heuristic that but delayed act should not be a problem here because you send uh, at least two segments per chirp per per per, per TSO uh, packets. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I mean, he, it, it's just that the the heuristic in Linux that um, tries to detect slow when slow start ends in the receiver yeah. can confuse you because here, oh, it, the chirp confuses it. And okay, okay. You know, and do you see what I mean? Yeah, those, so that high start yeah. is, yeah. Uh, is uh, full <laughs> by this uh, chirp yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is sender only. Uh, how do you, uh, you're, you're heavily relying on the ACK uh, spacing. Mm -hmm. How do you solve the problem of ACK aggregation and multiplexing? Like if. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that, that's why. At the moment, we're describing this as research because what, um, what we've done, um, or what I've proposed in Quick, is to have a sender control over the act, um, over the over the act ratio for the receiver. That's going to take longer to get into TCP, you know. But that's why this is this is research because the the, the sort of logic of it is that if, if you're running a big server like you know um, Eric at Google or something like that, the idea is that um, yes, you don't want to be sending acts all the time, but if if you can have the act spacing for the long running video stuff, but all the all the slow starts, you ask them to send more, you more acts, so you get more information. Um, so you get sender control over the over the um, over the delayed act ratio of the receivers. But uh, but that's you know that's research. That's but that, but that yeah. I meant uh, not what the server does, but. Uh, Access points, Wi-Fi access points, for example, do that. Or when we, we want see. to schedule yeah. like the packets, or get get our slot on the Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I probably should um, jump to Joachim's um, future work, which is um, you know Wi-Fi and Doxis and things like that. He's he's currently try modifying the um, the logic inside the chirp to deal with these variable rate links um, because you essentially have a filtering algorithm in there to filter out the noise and I mean, I mean path chirp, chirp does a fairly good job of that and that's 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 what we're using at, at the moment to, to sort of and, and LTE is similar where you've got essentially a discontinuous link that does nothing and then it does a lot and does nothing then it does a lot and and so you need your chirp to be long enough and and then you filter that in that noise out of the system, but yeah, it's it's um, as I, as I say, 
Joachim's using it day to day and mostly over Wi-Fi, and it seems to work, but we haven't done the full meter, you know, instrumentation of it um, o over Wi-Fi. We've, we've just you know, started on Ethernet. We wanted to bring it here because this is, this is an area that looks like it's got a lot of potential and we thought other people might want to try it and be, you know, get, get together a bunch of people to work on it together. Um, but bearing in mind that Joachim's got to get a PhD out of it, so, so he wants to do something novel as well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll just go back for one. Um, that's how you use it, by the way, um, which is exactly what I was just saying. Um, so... Are we at the point? Any more questions? Yep. Do I take the mic? Okay. Yeah, so uh, have you actually tested this in the uh, more live environment where um, the bottleneck is actually shared with other uh, flows that actually yeah, uses? I mean, so so that's, that's the whole point. Um, the, the, um, the reason for using these chirps is that, um, and, and yes is the answer to that, and the reason for using chirps rather than just, um, say, a microburst is that they... Um, as they get closer together, they they sort of the if there's other traffic there, the packets sort of run between the other packets and until they get close enough together, and then they start building a queue. So a chirp finds the available capacity, whereas something like a microburst, all the packets go in between the other packets, and it gives you the actual capa the, the, the capacity without taking account of the traffic. And that's why we're using chirps in the first place, and and that seems to work very well. Okay, yeah. so um, yeah. that's actually one comment, and then the other one is actually um, in a wireless environment, like, you know, the bandwidth changes like radically. Yeah. So in that case, it seems like, um, you know, it can actually cause, like, um, what is it, like immature, um, you know, bandwidth estimation in some cases and stuff yeah. like that. So I'm not sure if this so, is... So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more to do on, on, on radio environments. The, the intuition there is that if you're using slow start, what I said at the start, you've done all these um, you know, lower level um, earlier rounds that gave you no information. So what we're trying to do is get recent information and then rather than going straight to that, we go near to it and then get better information and go nearer to it. And so the information we're getting is in one or two rounds, so it's much more recent less stale information um, about what the rate is so we can get there more quickly. That's, that's the intuition. And it, it's sort of, you know, it's working. Um, so the intuition looks correct, which is why we want other people to, to work with us. There's no way that this is, you know, ready for prime time yet. But it seems, seems cool. I guess that's the other context switch from the last talk. The last talk was much more sort of, you know, years of research on it. This is like Joachim's master's project looked convincing and now he's doing a PhD on it. in terms of breaks and whatever. Yep. Coffee break. Coffee break. Right. Coffee break declared. <laughs> <laughs>